I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Gladly. President Brandstad. Here. Vice President Singer is absent. Secretary McFarland is absent. Treasurer Wasserman present. Member Baker. Here. Member Frizee. Here. And Member Gordon. Here. We have a quorum. All right. Thank you very much. Next up is item 2.0, which is the consent agenda. 2.1 is approval of the meeting minutes from our last meeting on June 13th. 2.2 is announcing staff members who have announced their resignation. 2.3 is the recommendation to renewal our, renew our adult ed cooperative agreement <coughs> with the other districts in our county. 2.4 is for the um, bids for the custodial supplies for the next school year. 2.5 is for light bulbs, it looks like. 2.6 is payment of the school's bills for the month of May. And 2.7 is payment for legal invoices. I move passing 2.1 through 2.7. All right. Support. Moved by Jerry, support by Patrick. Is there any discussion? All right, seeing no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, consent agenda passes. Next up, item 3.1, administrative appointments. I'll turn it over to Mike. I have a whole group with for you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let me introduce you to tonight. The first up is going to be Jennifer Coppins, and I'll read a little bit about Jennifer in a minute. Jennifer's here with us tonight. Jennifer comes from Swan Valley School District as the middle school principal. Um, Ms. Coppins has a Bachelor of Science degree and Master's of Arts degree from Saginaw Valley. She has spent 21 years of experience in education as a math teacher and administrator in the Saginaw area. So welcome Jennifer. We'll let them all speak after. I'll go through okay. all first if that works. And she is going, can you say where they're going to be placed? Yes, she's going to be at Dow High. Oh, excellent. <laughs> and uh, second I have is Margaret Doan. And Margaret is going to be our interim principal at Plymouth Elementary School this coming year. Mrs. Doan is a Midland High graduate. She has a bachelor's degree from MSU in education and Spanish and her master's degree from Saginaw Valley State University in elementary education. She joined her MPS team in 2004 as an elementary Spanish teacher. During her MPS career, Mrs. Doan has taught Spanish at Mills, East Lawn, Parkdale, English at Midland High, fifth grade at Cook, second and fifth grade at Chestnut Hill, and now at Plymouth in her new role as interim principal. So welcome. Margaret. And my third one is T. Lynette Sherman. T. Lynette comes to us um, a little further away from Glendale Union High School District in Glendale, Arizona. Ms. Sherman holds a bachelor's degree from Arizona State University and a master's from Northern Arizona University. She has 13 years of public education experience in Arizona as a teacher and administrator and she will be at Jefferson Middle School. T. is here as well. And um, next up is Keith Seibert. I'll read about Keith. Keith was unable to make it tonight. Uh, Keith has been a member of the MPS physical education staff since 1998 and is currently a PE teacher at Northeast Middle School. In addition, he is the Northeast Girls Swim Coach, Midland High Varsity Track Coach. Mr. Seibert earned his bachelor's and master's degree from Central Michigan University. He will be AP at Northeast. And next up is John Streeter, and John's going to be our .5 AD at Dow High. Mr. Streeter joined the MPS team in 2013 as an assistant football coach at Dow High, bringing with him 15 years of coaching and PE teaching experience from Merrill Community Schools. In 2014, he was hired as a physical education teacher at HH Dow High School, teaching health and wellness and lifelong activities for grade 9 through 12. Mr. Streeter holds his Bachelor's of Arts degree from Alma College and his Master's from Saginaw Valley State University. So welcome to John at Dow High as well. And last but not least is Julie Volano. Ju Julie's going to uh, go to Dow, Dow High as well as an assistant principal. Julie joined the MPS staff in 1995. She is an English teacher at Jefferson, an MPS middle school ELA teacher, leader, 
since October. Ms. Devano has spent part of her school day aiding with the system principal responsibilities following Mr. Scholl's move to Siebert. Welcome, Julie, as well. We'll let the, any one of you would like to move to the podium <laughs> up to a minute. The board, I'm sure, will welcome you, and you can you can talk to them if you would like. <laughs> bigger changes you've had in oh, administration yeah. in quite a while. Oh, definitely. So. I mean, look at Dow High. It's completely almost turned yep. over. Mm -hmm. so. All right. All right. Well, welcome, everybody, Thanks, and coming. thank you very much for your willingness to serve our children. Oh, this needs oh. action? Yep. Oh, sorry about oh. that. You, you know what? <laughs> 
It's because you circled the other one down with roll call. It confused me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so at this time, I'm open to a motion. I move to accept uh, five of the six appointments. No, I move to accept all <laughs> six. <laughs> I move to accept all six appointments. Yeah, which one were you going <laughs> to? Okay, move by Jerry, support by Lynn. Is there any discussion? No. Welcome. We're excited to have you be a part of Midland Public Schools yes. if you're new. And if you're not new, we hope you have a great experience in your new role. All right. I know John's already working. I got an email today. The AD at Dow High needs to know. <laughs> for the swim team so anyway <laughs> so all right all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. all those opposed <laughs> all right yes. moving on 3.2 congratulations welcome can you get that we're going to of course continue the budget process If you'd like to stay for the exciting part of the budget, you can. But if you'd like to leave, you can leave as well. <laughs> 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 but they understand the budget, right? Fail, fail. Yeah. <laughs> that was their first test. Well, I'm just going to manage to from here on out. This is really a two part process tonight that uh, we'll talk to you about. In, uh, the uh, first part um, is the final budget adjustment or amendment from 2015-16, and then the original budget adoption, which we presented at the uh, June 13th meeting. Um, as it's worked our way through the timeline, we're to that last part on June 27th. Uh, the final amended 2015-16 budget um, is, is our best estimate of where we're gonna end up with. Of course, we'll get audited uh, this year uh, unlike last year where we had an earlier June meeting which meant we didn't have all the information this year with school running longer it's been a race to get this finished so I would expect like we did last year you'll have some variance from the audit um, that, that we're there to pick up but we were uh, to this day still processing purchase orders and purchase cards so it's, uh, it's a tight time frame to get it turned around and it's Pretty quick here, I'm gonna direct your eight columns. Um, the first one is the last estimate that we had on the 15-16 budget. So that first column is the February estimate that we had where we were projecting revenues of 79.6 a million and budget, uh, budget expenditures of 80.2. Uh, we look like we would have a uh, dip into fund balance by uh, 572,000 and with our expected budget variance, and again that variance we talked a lot about the last meeting can go up or down. Uh, I have it uh, in there at a 1% variance. We historically have had two or three, but as you know, it's changing times and it's hard to say that we'll continue to get that. But if we did, um, we knew that would be better, but we knew that back in February that it looked like we would have a surplus this year if we got that variance, $229,000. Um, so we would not dip into fund balance at all. And you can see how much would have been left of the uh, spendable fund balance and then the percent that is of expenditures. So if you go to the second column over, that's really the one that I'm asking you to approve tonight, the final budget amendment. And that is, as we've looked at uh, here in June, our budget of revenues, we're looking at almost dead on to um, 80 million. And we're looking at budget expenditures of 79.986. <laughs> So it actually looks like instead of having to dip in at all, our guess would be that uh, we'll be about 16,000 uh, to the good. I know that's not a whole lot, but if we get the uh, budget variation on top of that, again, 1% prediction, we should be somewhere around 815,000, 816,000 um, actually putting money into the fund balance. And you can see that would leave us with a fund balance of 9,400,000 which is about 11.8% uh, of that. Um, there's not a whole lot that's changed since February. It's been the fine tuning of what we spent. Uh, the revenue, if you look back, has gone up. <coughs> Most of the difference in revenue from the very start of the budget till now has been those extra students that we didn't account for at the very start. Now, there's other things that come along, uh, technology grants that were in there, um, some variations that way. Um, some of the revenue changes where the state's up and the uh, local's down, but that 
goes back to those brown fields and some of those tax uh, increment uh, areas that, that cause the difference. But that's what we're looking at for the 15-16 uh, uh, budget. And again, until we have audited and get our final numbers, um, that's where we're going to be. So that would require, uh, this is not the roll call one, this is just the, uh, the, uh, an approval by you uh, uh, both. <coughs> I move to approve the 2015-16 final budget as demonstrated this evening. Support. I move by Jerry, supported by Patrick. Is there any discussion? Um, Bob, just one real quick question. Um, I know we're compressed with the one week type of thing or two weeks of closing between operations. Um, I'm just a little surprised we still anticipate $800,000 in that time frame on the variance. Uh, can you explain why we expect that much variance from this point forward? Yeah, uh, what a lot of, especially when you're putting in the final budget together, we'd ex uh, ex variance. A great example would be, I bet uh, I wouldn't even want to hazard a guess how many purchase card purchase orders are out there. So um, to actually have that amount and know what it is, that's always lagging behind. So there's there's some of that. The other part is there are some things that we are. Uh, making assumptions about that is if you remember we're gonna have some costs that continue on uh, into July and August so for example there's some medical you have to accrue for even when you're um, uh, on a premium based program as, as opposed to self-insured that we that we don't know and the other part to be very honest with you big organization you ask everybody buildings departments to tell you okay where can we transfer what have you spent what haven't you spent um, and that always comes back and it's oh, just not right where you want it. And it has to do with the size of the organization. And I, and I guess the last <coughs> thing I'd add to that is we do allow them to go quite late still using purchase cards, et cetera, because of the way school runs. You know, if we really wanted an exact, exact and not get a lot of variations, you'd be closing off purchase cards like this first of May so you would know exactly what everything was. But I that really hamstrings a little bit, so. Okay. I'd also add, Jerry, um, so when it comes out of time, they take individual count areas, and if you are um, not, this, if you were you were to the negative, that would be a write-up mm -hmm. to the state. And so most business officials um, will leave themselves a variance in each of those because you'd much rather be above and not get written oh. up. And then when you add multiple counts across yeah. with a little bit of variance in there, it begins to add fairly quickly. Um, going forward, so okay. that's true. Any function, and that's function. the larger uh, way they count by function. Uh, so, like uh, uh, the 111s, 112s, 113s, all dealing with elementary, uh, middle school, and secondary could be salaries or anything. It, you can't have negative counts there. Like Mike says, you do get read right up in the audits, so uh, they will be a little careful as you look at the bigger picture because you don't want to get in that situation when really it would be only because you were trying to cut it so close as you work through there. Good enough. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Is there any other discussion, comments? <coughs> All right. Move into a vote then. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Final budget passed. Thanks again for and everybody's hard work. The last column I'll throw over to Mike then because that's actually that 1617 budget that we talked about at our last meeting and mm -hmm. kind of leads into uh, Mike in the adoption of the 1617 budget. So we discussed it last month, very right. detailed what we're expecting and so we are expecting to rebuild the part of that fund balance with this budget and we haven't had a, a budget that I, I, I think it was five or six years since you've mm -hmm. uh, that where you would have more revenue than expenditures and so we expect to be in that position um, and <coughs> grow that fund balance to prepare for what's coming after the 1617 school year which is many of the um, concessions that we negotiated will sunset and will increase our expenses naturally mm -hmm. through those sunset clauses as we go forward so we, we expect our expenses to go up significantly and most likely we'll go from a, a budget that has excess revenues 1617 we hope to a 1718 balanced 
budget, which is where you should be. Mm -hmm. And you know, worst case scenario, with a little bit of student enrollment, um, because of the mergers of our corporations, major corporations out there, we could be to the negative, and that's why you want somewhat of a surplus, especially when you're having right. a, a good year with an enrollment mm -hmm. going forward. So, uh, the 1617 budget's there. We're asking for your approval and um, same process that we've used in the past, and we'll amend it probably twice during the next following school year to adjust to what's known. Mm -hmm. First thing will be student enrollment yes. in October. Yes. And um, right now we've estimated with that 55 students down on the blend account. Uh, we, Bob and I have been watching that closely. I even went into Bob's office today still a little panicked. Is that the right number? But uh, we do think it's the right number going forward. So I move okay. approval of the 2016-17 budget as presented. I'll support that. That was Yvonne. Okay, so moved by Jerry, supported by Yvonne. Is there any discussion? <coughs> no, I'll, I'll comment. I, it's, it's to Mike's point. While we know the next year we, some of our expenses will go up structurally from the where they're at. Also, it's nice to have this butter scene in spite of that against the enrollment uncertainty. Right. You know, that's a big uncertainty. I think the community understands that going forward. But uh, that who knows where that's going to end up two years from now. All right. Is there any other discussion? This is your roll call vote. Yes. <laughs> All right. So Ready. at this time, Jerry, <coughs> if you could take a roll call vote. All right. President Brandstad. Yes. Vice President Singer absent. Secretary McFarland absent. Treasurer Wasserman, yes. Member Baker. Yes. Member Frizee. Yes. And Member Gordon. All right, we have approval of the 2016-17 budget. Thanks, right. everybody. Yeah. Moving on, item 3.4 is consideration of contract ratification with Midland Federation <coughs> of Paraprofessionals. So we have the representatives with you tonight, and um, two weeks ago from tonight, we discussed mm -hmm. the um, what was yet to be ratified contract on their behalf. They've ratified and it's, we're, so we're ready to approval on the exact same um, uh, information that we presented to you two weeks ago. Okay. Anyone add, Cynthia? All right. I move uh, acceptance of the contract, ra or contract ratification for the paraprofessionals. I'll support that. All right, moved by Jerry, supported by Yvonne. Is there any discussion? <coughs> No, right. thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, everybody. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Passes. All right. Next up is item 3.5, which is the salary letter for employee groups for 2016-17. So it has been your practice for a long time. You have the salary letter in front of you, which is really prepared by Bob and presented by me. <laughs> so Bob's hard work in putting this together. Um, and it, it shows all of our salaries for all of our groups going forward. Um, there are there are some um, changes to paraprofessionals. Changes are reflected in there. Some bus driver uh, uh, transportation charges reflected in there as well. Um, due to the increases of, of doing transportation out there. And we have a couple category change, uh, people who have changed categories due to um, additional duties and assignments put in. But mm -hmm. everything else remains the same at this point because bargaining contracts were in place for the right. other groups moving forward. Miss any notes I need to leave? Oh, I think that's it. So pretty standard salary letter at this point. All right, excellent. I'll entertain a motion. I move acceptance of the salary letter for the 2016-17 school year. Support. All right, moved by Jerry, support by Patrick. Is there any discussion? Nope. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, measure passes. Item 3.6, which is enhanced access computers for high school mm -hmm. students. So due to our um, generous community that, that approved our bond campaign. Um, we're moving uh, student devices. We did so into the middle school this year. And uh, I have the student device for the high school that we're going to be purchasing tonight with its cover on it. And so it's a very nice device from Dell 
that you'll see um, that will work for students and durable enough, we believe, for the high school students. I'll pass it around if you'd like to take a look at it. So we are asking you to approve purchase for one-to-one -one at the high school with the additional backup for those uh, those that will be broke or are lost to keep the supply as we're repairing them going forward. And always a few additional if we increase enrollment that we're covered in there as well. So you'll see those in there. They are purchased through our TRIG, uh, so that's our statewide purchasing. So a very good price on those computers as well. Well, Sam is waiting until I get to touch it. But all right, <laughs> <laughs> entertain a motion on that. Okay, I'll move approval of um, item 3.6, the uh, purchase order to Presidio Infrastructure Solutions for $797,926.20. Purchase of computers, laptop computers. Support. All things. right, moved by Yvonne, supported by Jerry. Is there any discussion? These, these are going home with students. These will be theirs for the year. They the high school students will take theirs home. The middle schools are staying at the school this We're year. Presently still keeping those a at school. Okay. There may be a time where we begin to send those one to one. Gotcha. And this year was the first year for middle schoolers doing that program. Correct. That worked out well with us in terms of damage and yes. computers lost and all that good stuff. Yeah, you know, we feel it was a. Um, we estimated a certain breakage mm -hmm. uh, percentage on our, our devices, and we were below that. So. Okay. Good. Excellent. So these are a different computer these than are what the different middle schools have. Middle schools are. Okay. So and that will continue. Weight. I don't think you're going to see the same device every year. Purchase. Right. They just right. continue mm -hmm. to change price margins, mm -hmm. qu quality, what they can do. Um, the, these uh, um, have really grown quite a bit. These are Chromebooks, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, the Chromebook is the device that educators education picks now like a 65 percent right. rate of purchase now compared to any other device. All right, very nice. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. Very exciting for our high school students yes. coming mm -hmm. here. Very exciting. And I like everyone gets one. Everything's yes. it's all equal. <coughs> so, all right. Moving on to item 4.0, a request to address the board. Do we have, okay. Anyone? <laughs> all right. Moving on, item 5, finance facilities and operations. I don't think we did not have an FFO meeting since our last nope. meeting. So moving into gifts. Yeah, I have for you tonight uh, six items totaling $9,267. Um, I want to remind everybody at the end of each of these televised, we do run a list of each of the individual gifts, so if you want to see those. Uh, but they come from Jefferson Music Parent Association, Midland Area Chamber Foundation, the Midland Area Community Foundation, <coughs> and then there are three of them from the H.H. Dow High School All Sports Boosters. Uh, because of the amounts involved, don't require any approval tonight, just for your information. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much to the donors. And yes. yeah, the public can watch that list because it's just amazing the generosity from so many different people in our community, people, organizations supporting our students. All right. Item 6.0, which is human resources. We do have um, condolences to send. The board and staff extend their sincere sympathies to the family of Miss Veronica Greeson, who passed away on June 16th, 2016. Ms. Greeson was a physical education teacher at Midland High in Northeast Middle School for 20 years, retiring in 1989. All right, thoughts with her family. Item 7.0, you can read correspondence to and from the Board of Education. Item 8 is schedule activities. Our next regular meeting will be July <coughs> 18th. And that brings us to item 9, which is study discussion session. So I'll start with you, Patrick. You know, I didn't have much. Um, but as I watched all the new principals' uh, names get called, I started thinking, I was elected two years ago for the first time. I think every secondary school has a new principal I in those two years. Mm -hmm. um, you start thinking about the changes to administration we've had since I've been elected. Um, the new teachers we've hired in this past year, building of a new school, essentially. Um, you know, the, the IB program's going in while putting money back into the budget next year, so we've got a chunk of change. It's, it's impressive the work we get done, the work you get done with all the changes and all of that goes with 
that part of HR. It's very impressive. Yeah, I'd, uh, <coughs> congratulations to all the new administrative appointees, not just the group tonight, but earlier. Uh, but especially the ones coming in from outside of the district, welcome. And uh, it's, it, it's always good to have a mix of some fresh blood and fresh perspectives and fresh ideas coming in. So that, that's good to see. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I'd like to congratulate and thank all of our students for a safe graduation. I have not heard of any issues out there. Um, so that that's wonderful to hear. And as a long-term board member Lynn and I I have never gone through such a peaceful calm <laughs> <laughs> budget process mm -hmm. in, the, in my what, 13 years or whatever it is on the board it's nice that that uh, we were able to solve issues early with contracts and get things adjusted and so the budget process has been a no surprise no uh, no dramatic movement type situation and getting to stability it's great to be at economic stability I would echo everything that everybody said regarding the budget and just all the exciting things that are going on. Every time I drive down Rod Street, I look off to Central <laughs> and that those walls get higher and higher and it's very exciting to see. Um, and welcome to, again, all our new administrators and those that are changing roles and that's got to be exciting for everyone. And uh, since it is so exciting and I've decided mm -hmm. I will um, run again. Well, it Wonderful. will be fun, like Jerry said. I don't think ever, ever in my years on here have we had a so close to a balanced budget. So, and with all the exciting opportunities and programs, I think I'm not quite ready to go yet. So, <laughs> on that note, everybody enjoy the rest of their summer. Be fun. Um, congratulations to our new administrators. I give you my best wishes, and I hope you all really enjoy your jobs a lot. Uh, and I, like Lynn, find it an exciting time to be a member of the Midland Public Schools Board of Education, and I've decided to run again also. And that's, uh, and I hope everybody has a good summer too. It seems like it's really getting away from us quickly oh, already. So <laughs> enjoy what's left. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I do not have much more to add, but welcome to all the new principals. It's going to be exciting, and I know, Cynthia, you guys have been working very hard on hiring all the new teachers, too, and that is going to be exciting. really exciting. So, um, and yes, school did finally end. <laughs> For any of you, well, you have students too, yeah, so we're questions. the ones that yeah. we're living through. The, <laughs> yes. <laughs> How long is the 16th of June take to get? So it did finally end, and so I wish everyone a fabulous summer. And um, that is all, and I will turn it over to you, Mike. And speaking of teachers, we're, we brought to you administrators this month, and next month we'll begin the the process of bringing you many teachers, and um, the majority of them will be here. Uh, for you next month, but we certainly may have some in, in aug August as well. And um, as I wrote to you on Friday, you know, we had uh, lots of interviews. I think it's over 200 formal interviews, so wow. not the job fair interviews, mm -hmm. um, not at the university, not at our job fair, but brought in for, for another interview, about 200 of them. And I've tried to estimate Cynthia's time because I think we forced her to sit through almost all of those. <laughs> and so it's, it's significant. They've been very busy, our building administrators and our HR department on there. We've made great progress. <laughs> About 80% of the vacant teaching positions are filled. 36 of uh, 45 p positions, that's the proximization because of different FTEs and pieces of that as we go forward. Um, the vast majority of the candidates have been our category one, step one. That was the purpose of the um, retirement incentive. Not all have been. There's times where we've had to get the best candidate. We had to pay a little, and, that, and that's okay too. Um, and so we've, we've done quite well. A um, couple elementary positions left, a couple other little odds and ends that'll come along and pending any other changes that may occur between now and August. So uh, we're making great strides there. Today, I wrote to you as well that um, we reinvested the bond funds today, and we did quite well. Now what's occurred in Great Britain may not be great for our, our other stocks and bonds, but it was very good because of um, people looking for more security through mm -hmm. treasuries. And so um, I'll give this a little bit to Bob because he'll have the numbers better than me, I th but I think we gained a little over 300,000 today. Mm -hmm. 300,000. So it was well worth Not that occurring. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. uh, going forward. We had um, three bidders. One was not uh, secured with collateral, and one was, and the other one was not um, competitive. So we did go with the one that we had discussed multiple times mm -hmm. with, through Tomer Bank. So that was a good thing as well. Um, the Midland Community track continues to move forward. So um, I, I think they ran a few little issues, but uh, they're, they're nearly complete, is our report from Barton Mallow last week. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've probably have seen some of that work going on over there as well. And I can't recall if we said two weeks ago or not, but if we did, I'm sorry, I'll say it again, because it's important, Woodcrest, Chestnut Hill, Adams, I miss one in there, Brian. Plymouth all received IB authorization mm -hmm. status. Great. And so we're very excited about that, and uh, we're sure the other three will follow next spring as well. Excellent. Yep. That's all I have for you. All right. Thank you. Anything else? And thanks to the foundations for the support yes. to make that happen. Make that IB to IP happen. All right. So at 736, we are fine.